Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Adventuria by Ulysses Spiel. This game plays one to four players, takes roughly 35 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in this game, you are playing one of two different modes. There is the cooperative adventure mode, and there is the competitive all versus all mode. This game is kind of like a deck builder of sorts with the adventure mode where you go from one adventure to the next, improving your deck along the way and fighting against villainous monsters and of course the main bosses. Or it's going to be a player versus player combat game. You'll start with a deck of cards and 40 life and you'll be playing cards down and utilizing those cards as currency to play out other cards. You'll be utilizing your skills like magic and like melee and of course bows, attempting to defeat your opponents or your foes depending on what game mode you're playing. Are you going to play the cooperative game mode where you go through each adventure individually? Um, or of course, setting up a whole unique random set of adventures? Or are you just gonna go ahead and fight your opponents? Either way, we suggest you play the dual mode first, which is just you versus everybody else, and then move to the adventure mode. Let's talk about this game specifically. And of course, there is one on Kickstarter now available where you can add to this fun adventure experience. I'll go through the setup. I'll go through, of course, how the different modes play. And then of course, our review. The setup for Adventuria is pretty simple with the dual mode. Every single player is going to get a deck of cards. And how you know which deck is yours is you'll look in the middle right hand section. It'll have two letters. In this case, for this character here, um, the elf uh, bowman, you're going to have ES. Take all the ES cards and shuffle them and place them down next to you, as well as with this main card here. This is your character card. It's going to have a special ability. And then once you use this ability, you flip the card over. Start with a special ability flipped face up. Each player is also going to get a health module. You'll start with 40 health, so simply place the 40 like this, and then zero. And then when you take damage, you'll go ahead and move it down. 39, 38, 37, 36, and so on and so forth until you hit zero and you lose. Make sure that you set at 40 health, you've got your deck, you've got your character, and you will not need your skills card unless you're playing the adventure mode. If you are, go ahead and place it next to you as well. This is the first player token. Place it next to the first player. Deem who the first player is. If you're only playing with two players, you can set aside the other decks. Otherwise, if you're playing with more, just simply do the same thing with these decks as you would with any other player. And that is pretty much it for the setup for the main dual mode. It's pretty straightforward. The adventure mode, however, is going to include this big play mat. And to begin with the adventure mode, you'll need to choose which adventure you'd like to play. There's also two separate rule books, the dual rules and the adventure rules. And to set up, it explains how that works in the adventure mode, as well as, of course, which campaign you'd like to do. Now, the first one that you start off with is called Saving Silvana, and that's going to be a little short adventure that kind of comes with a story, as well as certain things that are going to happen, which I'll explain. But as for setup, it's pretty simple. You'll take all the Saving Silvana cards and you'll place them down in these three areas. This is going to be the boss space, which is going to start with the character being unnamed, aka no health. And then you're going to have this Saving Silvana time scale card, and you can choose the difficulty. It could be normal, it could be hard, it could be easy, it could be super hard. Choose whatever one you want and place that number of time counters onto the card as well as a hero action card for saving Silvana. You'll take the hero action, you'll choose the difficulty, and then you'll place a number of these tokens on that card as well. Based on the number of players, you are going to be placing down these hordes of bad guys. Um, if you're playing with two players, it'll be uh, five times the number of players, which is going to be 10 threat level. The threat of each card is in the top right hand corner. So you'll flip over cards from the henchman deck uh, out until you reach that number. Each henchman deck is going to be relegated by whatever the specific scenario says. So in this case here, you're fighting against orcs and pirates. So I shuffle up these guys here and then you'll reveal up to 10 threat worth of orcs and pirates. Sometimes the adventure module is going to have you include additional characters that you'll add out in the threat row if you would like. Uh, as for the extra cards here, these are going to be uh, cards that you can gain. These are like uh, bonuses that you'll gain. You can set them aside somewhere. As for everything else though, de demon abilities and practice slash training cards, you can set those aside. There's certain types of uh, scenario cards you won't need and additional henchmen you won't need for each of the different individual scenarios, as well as of course, character cards that you can kind of remove as well. So at the end of the day, this board should look something like this. Make sure that all of the henchmen have their HP markers set to them based on their amount of HP, uh, which is in the top right hand corner. Each player should have a number of D6 and D20s available to them. And then you have these fate tokens 
based on the number of players that you can set somewhere in the middle of the game board. Everything else is going to be health tokens, timer tokens, battle tokens, and fate tokens that you will not be using. You can set those aside, um, except for there's certain ones. You'll be using the health tokens or health markers for new enemies that might come out. Uh, and then, of course, this last thing. These are random tokens. These indicate the random characters in the game, you and your friends playing with you. Whenever somebody is selected at random, you'll shuffle these guys up and reveal one, and that is going to be the player that you're going to have randomly have an effect happen to them. After you have done so, you're ready to begin the adventure mode of the game. So both are pretty straightforward and simple. Of course, the dual mode is the most simple, but we'll get into now how the game works. In the main dual mode of the game, it's very straightforward. You're going to be drawing a number of cards to begin the game. In this case, it's going to be five. You'll select any cards you don't want, and you will set them aside, and then you'll draw cards equal to five back into your hand. And this should be your starting hand for the game. After you have your starting hand, and everybody else does as well, then in turn order, players will take their prep and action phases. And this is just for the dual mode. It's a different mode for the story mode. It functions a little differently. I'll explain that in a second. But for this mode, you'll be uh, drawing cards from your deck, you will be uh, untapping or turning cards to activate them if you have any that have been turned over. And then you can, of course, also play two cards from your hand and it's going, they're gonna be used as currency. You can take these two cards, place them face down, and these are gonna be like lands in Magic the Gathering or, um, or, or, or mana pips or whatever you wanna call them, like energy in uh, Hearthstone. You can turn these during your turn and use these as actions. Your character is gonna have a certain number of, um, of values based on their attack uh, for melee, for ranged, and for uh, magic. They're going to have a special unique ability they can use once per game, dodge, in the top right hand corner and then their basic equipment. Everybody starts with a basic attack and you'll have that for your character. You can play cards as you want after you have done the prep phase, the untapping, the drawing, and the placing of mana. Uh, whenever you want to play cards, the top left hand corner is going to indicate a number and these cards can then be utilized. If they are black, these are instants that take place immediately and are discarded. And if they are white, these cards are permanent effects that stay in play, whether it be something that helps you out, specifically increases your stats, or a weapon of your choice that might be able to benefit you in some way when fighting your opponents. Tap these guys here or exhaust them and then bring something into play, whether it be acrobatics, increasing my character's a stat of a dodge by plus two. So now I can dodge at an eight instead of a six. Once you've played everything you want to play or utilize everything when you want to utilize, you're done and the next player will get a chance to go. Uh, they will of course untap anything they might have, they're going to be drawing two cards, then playing two cards down, and then utilizing those cards to play out new cards. And that's basically how it goes. It goes back and forth, back and forth until everybody hits zero. Attacking is pretty simple as well. Certain abilities, such, such as like a spear thrower here, will have a cost to them with mana as well as you'll have to exhaust the card, and then you will roll dice. So combat is initiated. You will roll this die here, a d20, to determine if you even hit. So if you, if you roll the die and your value is equal to or less than the damage base of this type of weapon, so if this is a, going to be a spear, it's going to be considered a bow and arrow, you have to roll, and for this character, it's a 12 or lower. I rolled a two, so it takes effect. Then I check to see how much damage it does, one d6. So I will take a d6 and I will roll it, a four. Now my opponents are going to have an opportunity to dodge. They will take their die, they will roll it. If their number is lower than or equal to their dodge value, they are going to be able to take half, less, half damage less. And if they have any armor, they can turn that to the side and protect that much damage as well. Any remaining damage after that is dealt to their life points, thusly reducing them from 40 HP to whatever it is that they go down to. And that's pretty much how the game goes. Those are unique effects and instants that you can play out of turn. There's cards that will benefit you throughout the entire round, and there's cards that will improve your ability to damage your opponents, as well as to improve your stats of your character. So, how does the adventure mode work? Well, the adventure mode is pretty similar in a lot of ways. You're gonna be drawing your five cards into your hand, you're going to be choosing to discard any you don't want and picking up a new set of up to five cards. And then everybody is going to take the prep phase at the same time. They're going to untap everything or unexhaust everything, play down their two cards. And then after their prep is done and they've drawn their cards, yeah, I'm gonna draw my cards as well. Uh, then, then 
everybody's done that, then the actions begin. Starting with the first player, he or she will take all of their actions. They will turn all these over and utilize them and play out new weapons, new bows, new spears, new daggers and axes and jins and spells. And then attacking as well, utilizing these to attack all the different enemies. As you see, there are three different targets on the field here. This guy is not activated yet. But you'll be able to do stuff like try and guess the name of the bad guy. So you'll be able to spend certain ability, uh, uh, certain certain costs uh, to roll based on crafting and knowledge and persuasion. And your new card here, the skill card here that you didn't need before in the basic duels, will give you your stats for these specific requirements. And thusly, hoping to slowly whittle down that character and eventually gain that character's name, thusly flipping it over to defeat it, because your leader is the leader is something you need to defeat in the game. Take all of your actions as the main player, the next player takes all of their actions, all the way up until the point where nobody has any actions left or nobody wants to play anything else. Then the bad guys are gonna get a chance to go. And the bad guys function just like the good guys do. You'll take this d20 here, you will roll it, then you will assign it based on whatever number it says. Oh, a, five, a three through five, and I rolled a five? That's Cobalt Scolding. The hero with the most cards is going to discard one. Now the orc archer's turn, I'll roll a d20. It's a four, I check the one to four, the hero with the most health suffers a d6 plus five damage. And you'll go through this and all of the enemies in the line here from left to right, top to bottom. And once they're all done, then you'll go and move on to the last phase, which is the time scale phase. You'll remove a time scale from the time scale card and you'll check to see how many are left. And based on how many are left is what's gonna happen. New enemies might spawn, players might have to discard cards, players might take damage. It all depends on the adventure. Finish the end step up and begin by prepping all the players, untapping everything, drawing cards, playing down more cards, utilizing those cards, and rinsing and repeating until one of the two victory, victory or defeat conditions triggers. Either you all die and the game is over, or you're able to defeat all the minions on the playing board. Some adventures might vary and change how the game is played, but for the most part, that's how Aventuria works. All right, let's talk about my review. So I was given this game to uh, try it out, see how the adventure mode works and the dual mode works because a new expansion has come out and that's the Stories and Legends expansion. It's currently on Kickstarter with uh, 100 hours of extra content, additional stories, director cut modes, et cetera, et cetera. I even got to check out one of the stories in game and, and play it out. Um, what I can say is there's even more and unique ways to interact with the story. In the basic adventuria with the adventure mode here, there's a certain number of stories, not a huge amount of them, um, but of course some of them are much more in-depth than others. They're going to be making rolls and making checks throughout the beginning of the phase before combat begins, changing how the game works and how many cards you get, how much damage you take, what you start with, etc, etc. Whether or not you fight additional enemies, so for instance in the first one you might have to deal with additional cowardly goblins that hit the field based on how many failures people got. And so in the adventure mode it's a cooperative game that feels kind of like Hearthstone and Magic the gathering with a twist, with a story, and with added unique effects like having this time scale happen or being able to try and name the goblin, thus being or the kobold, being able to then flip him and deal with his uh, uh, form that's a little actually weaker in this case. So trying to get rid of his, his tokens here is important and you'll have to utilize uh, the once per turn ability as much as you possibly can. But with each of them comes more unique cards, new specific scenarios, and uh, much more danger. There's a way to increase the difficulty too by changing this time scale cards to a more difficult to uh, way of playing the game, more enemies will spawn, or stronger enemies, that kind of thing. Uh, this game also has some unique me mechanics. Uh, there is the crit hit and the critical failure. So if you roll a 20, uh, that's going to be a failure. And if you roll a one, that is a success. So it's kind of switched. But when you roll a six sided die, if you roll a six, that's the best you can get. And a one is the worst you can get because that's how much damage you're going to deal. Now, rolling a 20 is typically going to mean that you rolled over what you require. And even if you have that stat and it's a 20 or lower, you still will fail on a 20 and you'll have to discard a card from your hand. If you get a success, you will draw a card from your hand. So there's a benefit to doing so. If enemies fail, enemies are going to have to suffer a turn loss, meaning they'll stop whatever they're doing and they'll move back to the beginning of the round. And if an enemy successfully crits with a one, they will do that effect and then they will roll again so they can take extra turns, kind of like exploding turns for the enemies. 
There's events that can pop up and change the way the game is played, and there's these tokens, these fate tokens, that as you either defeat enemies in the adventure mode, or whenever you fail in the player mode, you'll gain these, and these will allow you to re-roll your dice and hopefully give you a better advantage in the game because you didn't do so well last time. Each character has their own unique skills, their own unique special ability, and their own unique weapon as well as stats. These are going to be using with a unique deck of cards. The, uh, the elf um, archer is going to have a lot of archer cards, but still is going to have melee and ranged, uh, or melee and uh, magic, just like every other character. And they have kind of differentiating abilities and powers, and there's some unique and some non-unique cards in each deck, but they function differently each and every way. What's also cool about this is you can attack any number of times equal to one time for each attack. So you can do one ranged, one magic, and one melee. But you cannot do two melee and a magic, or two magic and a range. You have to do one of each. And if you don't have one of each, you can only do one of however many that you have. That means you can do up to three attacks. As well as some cards in your hand will just simply let you spend your resources in order to play them directly from your hand to do damage to your opponents. Trying to time these cards is very important in the game. This is a tactical game. This is a kind of a tableau management management game, and it's a dice rolling game, and it's primarily a dice rolling game. Rolling high numbers is going to be bad for you, and rolling low is good. Rolling high numbers on the damage is good for you, and rolling low is not so great. There's armor, there's ways to dodge attacks, preventing half damage, and your objective is just to simply defeat as much as you possibly can while finishing the story as you go throughout combat, because combat is the most important thing in Aventuria. Overall, though, this is an exciting game. The artwork, the theme, it all ties in very well together along with the stories that you'll get to read as you move throughout the game mode. The dual mode, while rather simple and straightforward and just simply playing another game, another TCG that you've probably played before, has the unique addition of being able to add additional players. And of course, each individual deck is different, but all ties into an adventure mode that you can play cooperatively with if you would like. Cooperative is where the game shines, in my opinion. It's where you add the story, the unique effects, and the changing game modes each and every time you play, along with, of course, the exchanging difficulties, if you'd like. Also, the ability to add additional cards to your deck that make you a little stronger as you go throughout the game. The fact that they're adding even more adventures in this expansion and focusing primarily on that is a good thing. I really, really love the artwork for this game. I think it does a really great job of the theming and of the stylization of the cards. If you like beautiful illustrated fantasy artwork, then Aventuria is definitely one to take a look at. If you want a nice streamlined flow game that feels good as you move throughout, you feel stronger as turns go, and enemies can hopefully become weaker as you're able to defeat them. But if you're too slow or don't play the right cards, you'll start to see that these guys can be rather dangerous. When you have 40 health and you suddenly take 10 damage, things get a little risky and that's what makes this game a lot of fun. Overall, an excellent game, something I highly recommend, and if you want to play something that's like Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone, where it's you guys though versus this big massive wave of armies and a villain and these different things that pop up that change the scenario, then Aventuria is something you should consider. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Adventure. If you like this game, go ahead and also, go ahead, oh, if you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you have been here long enough to see more than one video, perhaps it's worth it to you to subscribe. If we've earned your subscription, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps us continue to do more videos every day, every day. Uh, we do a live stream, which is on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot, link in the description, and on Sundays, uh, Twitch and Facebook uploaded to YouTube the next day on Saturdays on, yeah, those, those, those locations. <laughs> it's been a long, long week, but I thank you so much, and I hope you appreciate watching this review for Adventuria. Go ahead and check out that link, please, if you want to see the new expansions, which will also have the base game that you can purchase. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time, and as always, I look forward to delving into Adventuria with you next time.